So it's time to start mounting the stuff that mounts in the roof uh, so that we can make a headliner around that or the structure for the headliner. Uh, at this point, I won't be doing any of the upholstery. I just want to get the uh, mechanics of it all worked out because there's several things that have to mount in the roof area. The first being the uh, rear view mirror. Um, then we have this overhead console piece that used to run the sunroof, but it's got two um, do um, excuse me map lights and also a place to put your glasses overhead. Uh, these controls are inoperative now. Um, it had some overhead courtesy lights. I don't know if I'll have enough room to put these in, but we're going to try and locate those. We have a grab bar for the passenger that's up on the right-hand side of the roof. This is the uh, third brake light that has to be trimmed down and for the angle of the back glass. We'll mock that all up and set that in place. We have our sun visors that have to be mounted and also the pieces that grab the ends of the sun visors have to be mounted up. So those are just a few items. There's some wiring harnesses and stuff. I'll see if I have to time to mess with putting in um, the captures for all of that. But this is a, a look at um, the one that I built for my Dodge Daytona. It has a center section here so that you can get it in the car. You know, obviously I'm not making it out of flexible material like in the normal Dodge Challengers, which is you could fold it up and pull it in and out of the car through the either the driver's seat or the passenger seat uh, once you've released it from the ceiling. So what I've done is I've broken it up into three sections. I've got two sections on either side and a center console that they tuck into. Now the center console over here is what houses um, my uh, overhead piece and also my tail light. So this is what I'll have to make the substructure for. And um, anyway, I'm starting out with the rear view mirror which normally mounts to the windshield. I'm not going to do that here um, because it's a much, much smaller windshield. So we're going to get it up as high as we can, which what we'll do first is we'll, um, we've got a mounting plate here that uh, I've made that we'll just screw into the existing mounting spot for a normal Dodge Charger you know, um, rear view mirror and welded to this piece. First, I have a piece that slides in here because this has uh, got a little groove in it and there's a set screw on the back side that tightens up against it. But um, I'll have to, there's a little, um, I have to weld a little spacer here so that this has enough room to slide on. And then this piece will finally go on and it'll be plugged, all three pieces will be plug welded together and then be able to screw this to the uh, ceiling location. I might have to relieve this little tab over here in order to get past some screws, but bottom line, that's the direction I'm taking. I'm going to start with that and then we'll go on from there. Okay, hopefully you can see that. It's uh, screwed into place uh, using the three mounting holes for the uh, old style um, rearview mirror. And uh, so this piece here has a, uh, it's a wedge shape, shaped slot in it and it has a little set screw on the bottom. And see that wedge shaped slot, you can see that. So that goes on there like that and then you would tighten it up on the bottom right there. So hopefully that'll be fine. Now for the sun visors, I took these out of the roof of the Challenger, not knowing whether or not I'd be able to use them, but uh, I f forget exactly what I did on the Daytona. It's been so long ago. Um, <clears throat> but they worked out just fine. Uh, I had to trim, trim them down. As you can see, this uh, bracket here has been trimmed. Uh, and the existing hole for the um, sun visor is widened out quite a bit so that this will pass through. It's cut down to about, let's see if I can get this to focus, cut down so that it, it's about as high, the whole, the whole uh, bracket is as high as this one ledge here, and I cut this little tang off here also. I trim these legs off and this leg off. The main thing is the orientation of this little relief hole right here in the gasket. 
when this is up here, it has to be pointed towards the uh, A post in order for this wire to be able to be led down into the A post. So that's one thing that I had to keep uh, in mind. So with that in mind, uh, that's the way these are mounted up. I've just got this bracket on that side tacked up right now. I wanted to make sure that it was going to lay up against the roof the way it's supposed to. And that the center, the distance between this edge here, which you can see these little outcroppings in the steel here to here, I need 10 inches. This is 11 inches from this end to this end where you see this in order to get the overhead console in. So fitting up the uh, third tail light, the high tail light in the upper window area, um, that piece of metal that's in there is shaped as the curvature in the glass. Uh, it's got quite a bit of uh, shape to it. It's deceptive. It looks like a flat piece of glass, but obviously that wouldn't work. Uh, it has to have a little bit of shape for wind resistance. Um, so it's got a little bit of a bubble of it, more of a bubble in the top. It kind of is a progressive arc. It's flat, flatter and then it curves tight. Um, what I did with the, uh, the housing is I cut a couple slots and some clearance slots and there's a centering pin in there too. I just ended up screwing it right, right dead to the, the surface here. Um, and um, it worked out okay because this thing's pretty flexible. It's got a rubber gasket on it to seal against the window. So if you press this down in here, it kind of complies pretty good. There'll be a little bit of light leakage up here because you're going to have some bedding material on the top of the glass here. So there'll be a little bit of a gap, but surprisingly, it's almost the exact same angle it needs to be. You can see in the front here, you can see the rubber gasket. Let's see if I can get this to focus here. The rubber gasket, as I press down on it, it's complying with the uh, what will be the glass. You can see that right there. So that was uh, surprisingly uh, easy to do. The uh, satellite navigation uh, uh, antenna or radio antenna, whatever it's for, is mounted on the roof. That was just a couple of uh, couple of holes that snaps through, and then there's a retainer on the bottom side. There's a rubber gasket that goes around the perimeter of the piece. That kind of seals it to the roof. Here's what that looks like on the inside, mounted up. Again, one of the advantages of uh, doing this while the, the body's disconnected is I'm standing right in the, where the dashboard would be and I'm able to uh, locate these two clips that uh, hold the uh, sun visors in place uh, at the base, at the top of the windshield. It's a little bit too close for focus, but you can see what I'm talking about right here. Also, I see that I have to fill in the end over here with some kind of a decorative piece because you'll see that through the windshield. So that'll have to be taken care of. Um, I've got, you probably just about see this spot here that I'm going to mount the um, passenger uh, it's a grab bar up here uh, it's just enough space to do it the passenger grab bar has a backer plate it's plastic that uh, there was a, a spot for it obviously on the Challenger and um, there's limited space here um, so all this is is just it spaces the uh, these two little towers is all I'm after. They put the uh, brackets at the proper angle when you screw through them into the structure. Um, so in order to put it in this car, I cut the backer piece off, which is just like a boxing. Now in order to secure it, I'm going to have to take a piece of steel because there's nowhere on the perimeter that's solid to mount to. I mean, there's a when you screw through here, there's just you're going through a double thickness of that uh, heavy metal that's on the perimeter of the roof structure, substructure. <clears throat> but right here and here is where I'll secure it through this plate um, into that uh, spot that I just showed you. All right, it's a bit difficult to see in here because everything's painted black, but this bracket's in here now and nothing's actually screwing to the plastic. The plastic is simply a spacer 
and it just guides the angle of the two brackets that screw directly into the metal of the structure um, so that when you pull on the grab bar obviously it's not going to pull the plastic apart. Um, I took the opportunity and let's hope you can see it here uh, to do some wire management also while it's really easy to, to access this area. Okay. Keeping all my wires above this area right here, this little flat area on the substructure here has like a little a little round in here. It's a nice place to tuck the wires. I used a variety of um, clips that I'd saved from different projects and also things that I recovered from this car. There's the wiring coming down for the um, vanity mirrors and uh, then also everything's attached to the A-post all the way down here and this, this is where it's going to plug in to the uh, new car. Again wires coming across in the front here. Um, again this is for the vanity mirrors. These wires are long enough to hang out of the hole once the headliner is up there so that you can plug these in and tuck them back. Um, so that's something that has to be kept in mind. Uh, again, just uh, some wire rubber or excuse me plastic uh, wire management clips from other projects. Simply drill a hole and push them in and then uh, snap them. Um, these are for the courtesy lights. I may or may not put them in depending on how much room I have in here um, when it comes time to do that. Uh, that'll be part of the headliner. Uh, this is the other plug that plugs in right at the base of the A post feeds the electric for all of this stuff. Uh, this is the overhead console wiring coming in. Um, and then there's also uh, on the back side here, you've got the wiring coming in around the rear view mirror that plugs in the back side here on the rear view mirror. Again, this is really nice to be able to work around, just walking around here real nice and easy, as opposed to crawling in and out of the car, because there's a bunch of little holes that have to be drilled clips, wires have to be wrapped. Again, yeah, I'm sorry for the, uh, uh, if you can't see what I'm doing here, but it's, everything's painted black in here, so the lighting is terrible uh, for filming anyway. Anyway, that's that. Kind of hard to get this thing to light up inside this, uh, this dark cavern, but you can see I've got the center console, um, the map lights and the glass holder and what used to be the controls for the sunroof. Everything's mounted up in the center here. I'm going to pull it back out before I permanently attach it, the, the brackets um, uh, so you can see what kind of bracket I made to hold it up in there to span. Spanning basically from this rib over here to the uh, support that's right uh, underneath the windshield. All right, I just thought I'd show you this before I reinstall it um, to continue work on the center overhead console. This is the housing that holds the, um, uh, what's, it's got map lights in it and holds your sunglasses and all that other good stuff. It actually has the controls for the sunroof that no longer exists. But at any rate, I had to make up for the irregular shape on the piece itself and get it kicked at the angle that I wanted it to be kicked at. And I've bent up these flanges and then in order to make them rigid because this thing is obviously flexible with just two flat straps I welded a side profile on each of the brackets and then painted them up this hooks on to um, the cross member that's just behind the, the there's a there's a front support under the windshield and then there's one back the first one back uh, it screws up to that uh, location and then again in the front it screws up to that location Anyway, I just thought you could take a better look at it out of the car because it's pretty dark in there. And I'm getting ready to put it back in there and uh, continue on. The next step in putting the overhead console together is to come up with two flanges for either side of the overhead console that will attach to the roof. So I have a half inch that will be in the down direction and an inch and an eighth in this direction with a quarter inch safety edge and I uh, shrunk it to the profile of the roof then I went ahead and made a pattern from the first one so that I could make a mirror image and have a second uh, flange made from the pattern. It's a little close in here but this is where it's going to go front to rear 
hitting all the ribs as I go. And that will be the attachment points for the two flanges. So I took a piece about 40 inches long by about roughly 10 inches wide. I have uh, these inch and a quarter lips on it. It's about eight and three eighths down the center. And I uh, used the same pattern that I used to um, make the uh, flanges to create the, uh, the shape of this so that it fits right to the flanges. Um, uh, also, uh, this is back where the rear uh, tail light is up in the ceiling and also the antenna. So if you ever had a maintenance, either one of those things, we're going to have a removable panel right here and that'll uh, keep that from getting uh, concealed forever. Anyway, on to the next deal. Hopefully you can see what's going on here. Um, the, uh, the cat, it's capped now. Um, there's a small access door that I made out of a 16th inch um, ABS plastic. And that's so you can get to the uh, antenna or the rear tail light for service. Uh, of course, the whole thing's going to be upholstered. It's going to be covered in some black vinyl. So you won't see that access door as uh, obvious as it looks right now. And uh, you kind of can see it here from how it looks like from the back. That's the third tail light, and that's the closeout. Anyway, on to the next step. Don't know if you could see exactly what I'm doing here, but um, this is the end of the piece that I just built. Now I have to go around this uh, rounded over uh, console piece and build all this up front. First thing I'm going to do is create a side pattern, which I've already done. I'm going to show you how that fits. Okay, the lighting's killing me today, so here's the side pieces welded on. Now I've got to fashion a bottom piece. Okay, so that's uh, most of the metal work on the overhead console. Um, on to the next step. All right, the idea here is to create a slot in the side of the um, overhead console where the headliner which is going to be made out of sheet metal, plus the covering, the upholstery material combined, will just fit into this slot, um, uh, and it will enable me to have a headliner that's in two halves instead of one big one. So what I've done here is I put a, a piece of 5 sixteenths material up against this flange temporarily, and then I'll be building out the side of this with this material here. This material here is... Uh, it's composite uh, material that's used for uh, decking, like treks or whatever, from your home center. And the particular stuff that's five-eighths of an inch thick is used for stair treads. So it's easily milled, it's easily cut, it's easily shaped and formed. So I'm um, using that to cap the sides and build it out five-eighths of an inch on either side. And it'll allow me to create a slot above there for the side of the headliner to fit into. Just so you know what I'm talking about when I refer to a roundover bit, this is a roundover bit in a in a router. It rounds over the edge of a, a board or a panel of any kind, and this is a bearing that runs along the edge. And this is the result. As you can see, this is rounded over now, and this is the profile that I'll be adding to the side of the overhead console in order to. Uh, create a, a ledge over here for the rest of the um, headliner to fall on. I'll show you that in a minute. All right, you can see that I've added this piece to the side and it's created a channel right above between the flange and this top piece here. So now that I'll be able to slide the uh, headliner, edge of the high headliner into this area here now, it's only sheet metal thick, so you'd wonder why I've got all this space. It's almost 5 16ths, 
but I have to, um, after I body work this with Bondo and sand it all and smooth it, I'm going to re I'm going to upholster it, and I have to have some place to tuck the upholstery in, so that creates a thickness a little bit heavier than a sixteenth of an inch. Then also, there's the sheet metal uh, headliner, which also has a thick um, uh, headliner material on it. So between the addition of that and um, all those things stack up to where it'll be a nice comfortable fit here, hopefully, because I have to pass these screws that assemble this to the roof. Also, while I had the chance, um, put a little sound deadener into the ceiling and uh, I'll be doing the same on the inside of the quarter panels before I drop this down because, again, it's a whole lot easier to do that while I'm standing here instead of crawling around inside the car. Anyway, I've got to add that other edge before I finish up the center console. Hopefully you can see this. Trying to film this is a real pain because of the lighting and everything, but uh, this is what the uh, overhead console is looking like here. Um, you can see down to the back there. Let's see if I can get rid of the glare of the light, but uh, you can see across the top there's a groove for the headliner to fit into. And uh, so uh, I'm not going to follow through and finish these pieces up. I'm just getting the construction done, the fabrication. I won't be doing any upholstery till way later. I uh, just want to make sure everything's easily assembled into the uh, into the car. So before I uh, get going with the interior perimeter of this window, um, I just basically taped it off with some three quarter inch tape so that I can cut it so that it's uniform. You can see I've got some uneven overlaps over here where it's wider and this sticks out, projects past the trim. And um, you can see this corner here is a little too big. Once you put the trim, you can see this corner. And um, so I'm just trying to smarten this all up to where it's all uniform. Like this is the three quarter inch bed you can see on the uh, brand new sheet metal. And um, so I want to clean these up just a little bit before I start um, my headliner perimeter on the inside. For my starter strip, I've taken an inch and a half piece of uh, sheet metal. 021 bent it 90 degrees uh, so that it's three quarter by three quarter roughly and I shrunk it and stretched it so that it fits the inside of the window opening this is going to be my starter strip for my overhead panels you see it clears the uh, the inner structure by about a quarter of an inch later on what will happen is is again I'll come in with some of this plastic material around over one edge and it'll be glued in to fill out this so there'll be a transition from here around to the inside but right now it's very convenient because it's easily clamped to the inside because there'll be no mechanical fasteners to hold this it'll just be the shape of it so I don't want to drill any holes or put any screws or pop rivets in it at this point. For the side of the roof I have uh, this little profile that I have to come up with come straight down and then a 90 degree angle and then it kicks back over here and this will accommodate this uh, welting that came out of my 2006 Charger donor car for my last project. It's very nice that it just will capture the, the uh, headliner here, but it also pushes onto this rim, and then this rubber that's on it sticks between the stainless steel and where the normal welting would go if you're just building a stock Charger, 68 Charger. This is just the, uh, this just pushes on with these little captures here. All right, starting with a paper pattern. I'm starting to cut the rough metal shapes for the headliner. Um, as you can see, I've already got one started in here and I'm starting to work it in. Um, it looks like a flat pattern, just bent and rolled in there. To some degree it is, but I'm gonna have to take the shrinker and shrink this all down so that this all is uniform and is distance away from all the substructures. We don't want this rattling. And then uh, this will all get trimmed away and edge welded here, up and around here, and then it's pushed into this slot and this all has to come down and lay flat. So you can see how much extra metal I have up in there that has to be worked on. 
All right, with a little bit of manipulation and some shrinking and a little bit of wheeling to get this to curve over in this compound shape over here. This is kind of like what I'm looking for. And I'll go about trimming it off and uh, trying to weld it right to the extremities. So enough of this is done that I can show you pretty much what the whole idea is uh, on this. As you can see, I have this uh, L channel that conforms to the rear window track on the bottom side and it gives you enough space to put in this profile later on. This is a, just like a rounded over thing here. I'll refine it a little bit so it flows a little bit better uh, with uh, probably, you know, as I, I do the body work, I have to body work all this together to get all these transitions really nice. Anyway, um, so that finishes out the rear windows because the fabric will come around and wrap around this thing here. So when you push this in, the rear window's finished off. Um, over here, um, you can see I've got a little crease in this panel here. It bends over onto this flange that I welded in. This flange is at an angle in order to accommodate this uh, little weld tank that I showed you a little while ago. And you can see that this is just pushed in uh, onto this flange here. And then there's a space between it so that it can uh, the little C can go around it, and then this little flexible piece here finishes out. So the fabric will wrap around here, uh, around the whole panel, and then this will cover the transition all the way down to here, all the way up to the end of the A post. And also, you can see I've got this stepped over here. A uh, little step in this panel is to accept. The, the next panel that's coming up, which will be this panel across here. So I'll do the perimeter around here, and then I'll fill in the field, because this is a large sheet of uh, metal that has to be slightly shaped in order for it to not pucker up and down. Anyway, that's the idea. So that's the second piece set up in there. Um, I still have a little bit of shaping up here. It's a little bit wobbly. I gotta shrink that out and tighten it up a little bit. It's got a little bit of an arc to it at the top. Not too bad though. After welding in this uh, long side piece, the next piece was a little bit tricky. This is the uh, transition up front. It has to curve in this direction. It has to curve in this direction. Um, it actually it just ends up being a very easy roll in this direction right here and here. This is stepped, so this fits in really nicely here. Then this is bent over again to make it a, the attachment point. By the way, this is where this will just get attached with rivets along here where these drill holes are. So this will not be welded there, obviously. Um, then I had to go ahead and make this uh, front piece here, which is a bend uh, at an angle to fit just below. This is the rubber gasket for the windshield. And this fits just below it. Um, required a little bit of shrinking and stretching because it, it arcs over this way as it arcs around in this way. Um, I had to step it to receive the next panel, which this is a, the beginning of the next panel also. I had a clearance out for where the um, sun visors attach and leave myself enough room for this wire to be passed back through here. This will be covered by fabric so this hole won't be seen. So the, it'll allow that wire to be pushed back up into the top once it's plugged in. Um, and now it's time to fill in this uh, center section here, or fill in the field. All right, so this is the uh, front piece filled in. I uh, broke this field piece up into two pieces. Rather than try and handle that whole large piece overhead, there was a lot of little uh, details up front here going on, so it was easier to work in. Uh, around all that stuff uh, in a small piece. Now we're having a little focus problem in here because all the reflectivity, but I hope you can see it. It's been real difficult uh, getting a good shot of this thing in the inside of the car, so I thought I'd show you while it's out of the car for a brief amount of time while I clean up the welds and um, do some counter welding on the, uh, the backside in order to firm up these joints. Um, and I have a little bit of dollying here to do uh, to uh, hammer down some of the seams. So yeah, you're obviously looking at this is the back part in the sail panel, and then that goes forward towards the front of the windshield. And there's your clearances for 
your uh, sun visor and this is the sun visor catch over here and this is the rim that completes it out across the front okay hopefully this will focus with the shop lights and everything in the background trying to f mess with the phone but um, that's all the metal work um, except a few little doodads here and there little spruce them up things like these little corners have to be put I have to make little closures for that and that in the front and the rear um, but uh, that's about it um, so uh, I'm going to uh, end this video right here and move on to the next step